color TV on your black and white set? That was the plan back in 1968. See, back in 1968, color television sets were still rather pricey. My uh, dad and mom didn't buy their first set uh, until around 1969 or 1970. In 1968, August to be exact, Popular Science Magazine carried an article by Sam Shatovsky titled, Now Color on Your Black and White TV Set. Uh, who wouldn't grab for that one, huh? The article started out with the following synopsis to how it would work. Mr. Shatovsky explained, when a TV show is produced at the studio, the black and white TV camera is outfitted with a special rotating three-color filter disc. Installed between the camera lens and TV pickup tube, the, the disc generates color-dependent flashing light pulses translated as subjective color by the program viewer at home." End quote. According to that, uh, without adjustments, adapters, or special glasses, red, green, and blue pictures would be produced. When viewed at home on a black and white TV set, intensity pulsations from color effect portions of the picture set are sent to the cortex of the viewer's brain, and the viewer receives color impressions, known as subjective color perception. The result is limited to selective portions of otherwise normal black and white still pictures. Uh, some persons are blind to the effect. Subjective color perception had actually been discovered 100 years prior to 1968. The trick is in making the portion of the image to appear in color to pulsate. When light is pulsated in a particular sequence, the viewer gets the idea of seeing red light. Another pulse characteristic translates as green, and still another uh, leave, leaves a blue impression. Each color to be transmitted has its own light and dark pulse sequence. It's like a coded message that our brains decipher as color. Those pulsating images would be transmitted along with the regular black and white image. When the show was viewed, voila, color, but of course, not true color images. And two, it was limited to still pictures, so it's no wonder it didn't really catch on with the networks. The system was the brainchild of James F. Butterfield of ColorTel Corporation. The light impulses are recorded on black and white videotape or film by the TV camera when the TV presentation is produced. So there would be uh, a, no misunderstanding. The people at ColorTel emphasize that their color system was not designed to replace color broadcasts since it does not have the high color saturation or brightness of regular TV. And the biggest drawback of all, I already stated, that being it is limited to still images and most broadcasts, of course, had motion. However, ColorTel felt that there was a market for creating exciting effects uh, for special shows, and particularly for eye-catching commercials. Special tests that uh, were conducted by ColorTel showed another drawback to their system. Their tests showed that um, there was a small percentage of people who could not see the color effect, just as there are people who are colorblind. The article concluded with a pred uh, prediction that failed to come to realization. The article said to expect color on your black and white set by fall TV season. At least that never came about on a large scale, if at all. I remember about this time, 1968, a television news program covered this and actually demonstrated it. I don't recall what station or what the show was, but in their broadcast, I remember seeing green. I know that my dad and mom <clears throat> were watching also, and none of us were really very impressed. Evidently, not too many too many people were overly thrilled as it never caught on. I hope you enjoyed this brief look back at 1968. Please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and please leave comments. Thanks for watching the Dennis Morrison channel.